All these no imperialist idea. puppets. I'm here to talk about political economy <laughs> with other people of color. <laughs> and so we can start a uprising, a Marxist uprising from communities of color. Okay, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Activist Class. My name is Spec. I am here with Day. Day. Chrissy. A. Myra. Hi. Aretha. What's up? And we have a guest here today. A special guest. A real guest, not uh, a <laughs> fake <laughs> guest. <laughs> fake, <laughs> fake guest. Uh, Rial, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Rial Johnson, political consultant. Been involved in Seattle politics and other politics around the region. And uh, the last time we spoke, we were all... Very downtrodden. Sad. We were Capital medium. S with the sad. Um, just to refresh, uh, Shama was down by more than eight points. Um, we some were, of us had hope, though. Some of us had hope. I was uh, not one of those people, and I have never Aretha. been more excited to be absolutely wrong. Now she's up by almost four points. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Ah, that's so good. Cool. So 12 points. She swing. kicked Egan's ass. Hell yeah. Um, but it was close. She broke Egan's egg. <laughs> okay, so you now that it's all it. over, I need to know. On Wednesday night when we recorded, who had faith that it was going to happen? I had hella faith. I did not. I was so in the middle. Okay. I yeah. Did. You I did? Like, I knew Shama would pull it out. Okay. Come through. But there's a difference between faith and like desperation. <laughs> I don't want, no, I don't want to take credit for having hope. I definitely don't have hope in this city to make the most progressive decisions sometimes Mm -hmm. as it continues to change. But I was desperate. Like I like needed Shama to win. Yeah, I was was trying to feeling that. No, we saw ballot boxes were stuffed and remember Aretha was like, keep them on their toes. Mm -hmm. Remember when you said that? That I did. We (laughs) all waited till the last minute. That's what we do. And that goes in a lot into organizing and and people always tend to underestimate how of a much machine that shama is as an organizer absolutely when you see her in action she's it's, such a badass man <laughs> shout out to Auntie it's, shama. it's impressive to watch that, and that's i think that, that reflects in like the late voting just the gotv getting that extra touch on door on on doors of people that are just casual voters or don't vote or you know just pushing those people to the end and that's that's what a ground game does i know a lot of people are criticizing like millennials for voting late and giving ourselves like that anxiety we got a lot of shit on the last episode because we told the listeners that we haven't voted or like we voted at the last (laughs) minute i think chrissy literally just voted and came back i like the high five the human contact i never will drop my ballot in a mailbox are you kidding not that i don't trust the postal service god bless them (laughs) (laughs) rain or snow (laughs) shine but come on i just like to see it Go in, you know, just to make sure That's that it said. counts. <laughs> yeah, and we're I definitely f- love <laughs> using the ballots for that reason too. Yeah. yeah, and we're one of the few states that do it. Like I, I've worked in six different six states now. We're the only ones that do it like where it's that's the only way we do it like i'm used to having to get people to the polls show up wait in line all that stuff and it's like and but it's a, it's a good feeling but it's also like a huge lift mm. so you kind of like yeah we're not taking advantage of what we have but also um yeah it's a feeling like going i like putting my ballot in the box i mean i'm a late voter too i hate to admit it i also like to see what mail i get and what calls i get cause, exactly because it exactly. helps my own kind of research like what kind of voter am i mm. and what kind of because once you send it in once it's in you actually you'll start you, you get taken off the list yeah mm-hmm. for, so okay. with it within like four or five days so i like to just see what i oh, get interesting so once you put your ballot back in your mailbox the mailer stop well it takes three days to get to the oh, election office well, what, once they receive it so I, when you pull information like what i do i pull like mail it like who if you've already voted i'm not gonna mail you so mm-hmm. um yeah so like if you know, so so if, so if people are tired of getting mailers vote as early as you can then you won't get mailers anymore right mm-hmm. or calls or texts or ads targeted right at you it's mm-hmm. a fucking life hack <laughs> no wonder everyone on capitol hill is getting the shit ton of mailers mm-hmm. oh interesting that's true yeah 
Well, I mean, I think King County and I did a shout out um, on Twitter, but they, I think they make the process pretty accessible, oh, yeah. and I think they're pretty responsive. And voter turnout was high, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did it did it top sixty percent? I don't know, but it's, it's higher than it's higher than the last one. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know that. I don't. I can't remember the numbers. I've been paying attention to outside Seattle mm-hmm. <laughs> voter accounts lately, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's uh, I, it is very accessible because like. You see, I've seen voter suppression in like Ohio and Florida go rampant, like where they literally move early voting. You can only in Ohio we used to be downtown, and then they moved it outside. And like Nina Turner did this thing, and Alicia Reese, uh, these these state reps and senators before she joined Bernie's campaign, took from went from downtown where they used to be to the new place out in the suburbs, and took three hours on bus rides. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, <laughs> which is really like voter, you know, so if you don't, if, if you can't vote, if you didn't vote by mail, which you have to register for, if you can't get your polls, you have to, you know, if you want to vote early, you know, if you can't, if you can't get off work to work to vote, you literally have to catch a bus three hours to go to the voting place from downtown, which of course was where all the black people were living mm-hmm. and they take it to a white neighborhood. And this is the kind of things you do. They do all nationwide. So like Washington in comparison is very relatively easy to vote. So fucking vote people mm. like it's just mm-hmm. you know you you have it easy we should have a way higher turnout in that mm. case for any boomer who's has voting suppression trauma and thinks that i'm an entitled asshole for waiting to the last minute i'm feeling grateful in this moment thank you for the history lesson real <laughs> and the present day shama won by how many points now five i think she's four. up four now about four points 50 yeah um, in the other districts, real quick, Lisa Herbal won in D1, Tammy Morales won in D2, Shama Swan D3, Alex Peterson D4. Boo. 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 Evil villain. Bad shit. Deborah War is D5. Redemption? Mm. Not yet. Deborah's like, I think I made it out the best. <laughs> I could still <laughs> not be accountable to the community, but nobody is quite hating me right yeah. now. <laughs> we will, Deborah. And she still got to get chamber money, but like nobody was really talking shit. Like, like she got left off all those graphs and shit. Like all the graphs were like, like, oh, Deborah literally skated by. Yeah, yeah. which is important because she's going to be vying for um, to become the uh, president of city council, which is a very important role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this might be her last term, so we might see, we might see a new Deborah. Like a more active vocal. Deborah. I always thought she was gonna go back to being a judge. She just seemed like more. She li- she seemed like she liked the judicial process. She's more. really into laws, so yeah. Deborah was a badass defense attorney before she. She was. So. I've heard good things about Deborah's past, and I'm hopeful for Deborah's future. <laughs> D six, Danny Boy Strauss, Young Boy Michael Bryan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> should we should we trust Dan Strauss or not? Are we giving him the benefit of the doubt? We'll get to it. <laughs> um and D seven, our boy, Mr. Vanilla himself, <laughs> Andrew Lewis. Hey. Did you see the AKA picture of him Dan Strauss's little Sounders brother game yesterday? He was with at the Jenny Sounders Durkin game and hu- holding you know arms around Jenny Durkin and Governor Inslee. It was a real gross. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait! No, no, yeah, the, no, no! Yeah, they're in a sky, in a he was a skybox with Inslee in, and Durkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have that. You want me to that's, I mean, that's gonna happen, I guess. But yeah, yeah. Why well, was never, he invited? Cause he just won. He's I don't know. He's the new city council. Who else was there from city council? Yeah, just him, I guess. <laughs> like, I mean, okay. So hype. the result of all of those seven races is that we have now what some people are calling the quote most progressive council we've ever had. We are woke as fuck, Seattle. Oh my god! Um, Hold your horses. Does anybody think that that is remotely true? It's remotely true. <laughs> I think it's tr- I think it's true. It's to truth. I think it's true. <laughs> it passes by truth. <laughs> I think it's true. In a way, I also have to deal with the fact because uh, this is also the first time in about fifty years that we haven't had a black person on city council. Mm-hmm. So I I'm gonna probably have to deal with a little PTSD on that because helping with Tammy's race, that kinda indirectly did that and I feel like and I failed on Sean's race. So mm-hmm. like so until I see what policies are going to be passed, mm-hmm. based on what other stuff I've seen from how the IE money was spent for "quote unquote" progressive candidates, mm-hmm. until I see actual policies, I'm not going to. I can't really say we're progressive. They came in voicing progressive, but that's been so. That's a very common theme coming around. I mean, I, I've heard Republicans call themselves progressives. I mean, I mean right. I, Bellevue City Council Republican was saying she's re, 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 progressive. Uh, Heidi Stubler said, she, I'm a progressive conservative. So the term is like, mm-hmm. it's, oh, it's so outdated. 
it's a progressive like, conservative. Yes. What is that? I don't like <laughs> freezing hot. Oh, it's the social. <laughs> icy hot. It's the social icy liberal. Hot. I am icy hot. Yeah. No, but with like, icy hot, you literally are those two things, but back to back. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just like we're probably like socially conservative. So yeah. fiscally responsible, fiscally conservative, socially liberal. Exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 it's still money. bullshit. Now they just say progressive, yeah. liber- uh, progressive I'll gently keep your ass. It's just, yeah. <laughs> With a cookie. Yeah. I want, you know, I want weed to be, you know, I want weed to be legal and equal marriage, but I want to lock all poor people and black people up. That's just. Yeah. <laughs> that's and, all, and, and homelessness is your fault. Yes, and yeah. et cetera. And I want rich people to keep all their taxes and all I'm that. I'm a romantic yeah. fuck boy. <laughs> I can keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Do it. So, so I'm yeah. a white rapper. So we need to see, like, yeah, God, we need to see it. what progressive. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Speck was a rapper? I'm keep going. Wait, I'm sorry, like... no, shut the fuck up. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm just going to wait and see what we see from the bills. And if, if the bills that were coming down the pipe reflect how IE was spending happened, then people of color are fucked mm, yeah. because people of color, candidates of color were left behind in the dust with spending. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what I'm worried about is progressive left in Seattle is literally does not care about POC people, you know, and, and, in, and I say like this, when I see this narrative, I see, you know, there's only a few council members I see right now that I have faith in. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking, waiting for the other ones to actually show something and, and sponsor some bills, drop some bills and actually vote and stand strong on some bills. Mm-hmm. I think people have been putting so much emphasis on the council when we're a mayor of strong city, mm. like the mayor controls about eighty percent of the policy, mm. veto you know can veto things, and I think so. Hopefully, with the progressive majority, we have veto-proof bills. Mm. But also, like even then, the mayor gets to set all kinds of policy that the council really doesn't have a say on. So that's uh, I think that's what people need to really be aware of. We have a council we can rally behind if that happens, but we also got to be strategic all the way through twenty twenty one to push a new mayor as well. And I, you know whether Durkin re- re- comes back or not, we need to be, we really need to rally behind a mayor for the city that's going to really push progressive policies. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's that's one of the things. Like, we all have to stay awake even after this election, even though it was like hitting us hard and everyone's feeling like a lot of like analysis paralysis and fatigue from the election. It's like now people are banking on no one paying attention to what policy comes through. Like, I mean, city council got a lot of attention, and I hope like people, you know, so that's going to be up to not just the community, but the council members themselves to really engage, like they're gonna need support. Cause I see like when they, if they push a policy and then it's safe Seattle people po- <laughs> just showing up to, to fight it, that actually affects votes. Mm-hmm. So we have to have like, Absolutely. people showing in support, not just when they're mad, but when they want something to pass, like, hey, we need to show up and show support for these members to pass these bills. And that that's one thing I should like, just get downtown somehow. And I know it's, it's hard for like, especially poor people to get downtown and it's not accessible, but we just got to find ways to organize around the bills. And hopefully the council members do a good job of like communicating with the community. Like say, yeah. hey, come, like not just say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Like, hey, come come here yeah. and give me some support because I want to push this and I need, your, I need y'all help. Because every time you, and from a council, like some people in office, like whether it's state level, or whatever, they, when they sit on those chambers or they're from their dais, um, and they see a person out there. Every person is like another hundred people out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Represents like a hundred voters. So they think if you know a hundred people show up, then that's ten thousand voters <laughs> like that are going to be mad at you if you do this, mm-hmm. or ten thousand that are going to be happy with you when you do this. So that's what I really think is uh, what what really has to happen is like we cannot let this momentum um, fade. And I think one thing with Amazon, with throwing that money bomb, united the left a lot. Like you saw mm-hmm. DSA, SA, Progressive Dems all come together in a lot of ways mm-hmm. that I haven't yeah. really seen in the city. Yeah. So hopefully that's that can, we can keep that going and, and show up for these members. I'm gonna show up, you know, I'm gonna show up for Tammy. You know, when she wants something, you know, when 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 she wants to get a bill passed, we gotta show support for those things because they 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 claim they're gonna you know push you know push hard and fight for these bills, and they probably will. And we, if we're in a silent, we don't or we don't know when it's when it's happening. Those things can fail. Well, I think you bring up a good point that it's going to come down to how these council members are able to galvanize community. It also makes me wonder, like, which council members are actually going to invite and, like, open up their offices first to community um, from the moment, you know, they start whatever in January. And I, and I think about people like I think I think you're right. I think Amazon united the left. And I think right now, you know, on paper, it's a good thing because it's a pretty progressive council. At the same time, I think what it did was 
kind of blur the lines on the left a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like we had to start rooting for people that we usually wouldn't necessarily put a lot of energy behind. Yeah. Like we were looping Andrew Lewis in the same conversation exactly. and breath with the Shama Sawants. And Speck pointed out that, I mean, it's a fucking Sounders game, but he was in the press while celebrating with the very person we're saying is still our biggest obstacle on pushing progressive policies in this city, Jenny Durkin. And they're having a sweet time in the press box, kind of pulling a little uh, Ellen DeGeneres, George mm-hmm. Bush mm-hmm. kind of action. Mm-hmm. Same, same. Same, well, same. And so my, my thing is, my question is like, it's progressive, but I think we're a little bit... Um, we were desperate. We were desperate. And <laughs> mm-hmm. on paper, and that's why I was like really concerned with this progressive narrative that was going on, at least liberal narrative, when Shamo was still unclear if she was going to make it through or not, that no matter what happens in a race, this is still a victory for the left. Mm-hmm. Can I say something about that? So, like, in the media, um, in the post-election spin around, like, the backlash to the Amazon money bomb, a lot of people said that um, the voters in the city just didn't want to feel like they could be bought, so that they were, like, anti-Amazon because they're like, Amazon can't buy my vote, you know? But they, I think in the Seattle Times, there was an article about um, Phil Tavel talking about door knocking and docking, knocking on someone's door and then them saying like, oh, we don't want to support you because you're the Amazon candidate. But at the same time, there was like a an Amazon Prime box like at their doorstep. <laughs> and so I think like what this boils down to right now that is critical for the left is for us to actually define what a progressive left actually is and what the difference is between everyone who is self-identifying as a progressive Mm -hmm. to the electorate and not to say like hey you know we need you to make different consumer choices because amazon is trying to buy our city but like hey we actually need our legislators to legislate progressive tax reforms and um capital controls like at the city level all the way up to the federal level and like have a really like clear conversation around the issue that amazon has in our city mm-hmm. yeah and i think what we will find out after we do that because i agree we definitely need to do that is who's actually not that aligned with us yeah mm-hmm. you know and like at the end of the day like what does Dara war is all the left she doesn't owe us jack shit and she can literally do the same thing she's been doing but we're also hella pushing for her to win which I think was necessary. You know, it was brought up earlier too that Dan Strauss and um, Andrew Lewis and and maybe it was just them two Herbold. also and Lisa Herbold, right? They um, they sought the endorsement from Case. They wanted the Chamber of Commerce's endorsement, and they just were the candidates who didn't get it. What if they got it? Yeah, they filled out the chamber. Um, Lisa did this election. They both. Lisa was endorsed by the chamber in 2015, and she went after the endorsement again. Again, in this one, they they all did. The questionnaires are online. Stranger did an article and posted them. The all. only ones who didn't apply was Tammy Morales, Sean Scott, and Shama Swan. That's it. Yeah, and and Chris Bergero during the primaries. So back to Speck's question: Is this the most progressive council we've ever seen? I think that we need to we need to seize this momentum and define what progressive is, yeah. mm-hmm. and that all also boils down to I think actually talking about how. SA and DSA and all of the progressive left movements culturally have been functioning and kind of working in isolation of communities of color. And like we've seen this throughout history, like recent history as well, like the the (laughs) Occupy (laughs) movement. It was white, yeah. It was so white. And like what we need is a not an analysis of capitalism and analysis of the last 40 years of neoliberalism that includes communities of color and has them front and center of it. Yeah, I, I think myself. what I think what has to happen is there has to be a real defined slate of policies. Yes, F- you know, focus we need at. demands. Yeah, and I think like Sean was pushing the people's budget right now, um, but we yeah we really need like stuff like the like not just Green New Deal, crim- you know, people's budget, real criminal justice reform. Like we need to be abolishing bail. We need to really and probation. <laughs> yeah, really be putting accountability on police. Like like there has to be defined policies and like even a child child care supplement you know subsidies. These kinds of things that we can actually push, and of course a head tax, you know, a really big head tax, like mm-hmm. you know, like. Yeah. But like, I think the, there's going to be a head tax brought back. 
Because that's what Amazon's goal was. You know, that's where they put that money. Because they know whatever yeah, money they yeah. invest in this election, they, they're gonna it's gonna be way less, <clears throat> or you know, anyway, like, just less than what they were they were going to have to spend on a head on a head test. Um, we have Shama Sawant winning again, um, and sadly, as we mentioned already, Sean Scott not making it through. Um, within five points, though. Oh my God, that's a huge win, though. To be within five points is huge. But yeah, but a lot of people kind of feel like kind of feel this sour taste because within five points also means he kind of had a chance to win. Absolutely. Yeah. And so many people didn't step up to the plate. There's a lot of labor power here in Seattle and they literally dropped the ball on endorsing Sean Scott. They endorsed him the last couple of weeks of election pretty much to look good for themselves mm-hmm. and brought no money, no IE spending and no volunteers in the end. About a million dollars was raised in labor and progressive super PACs total. Mm-hmm. N- Two thousand dollars went to Sean Scott, mm-hmm. <laughs> and two thousand dollars went to Shama. Mm-hmm. Just for it was like just text banking, more like surveying, just to see. And it's so chump change. Yeah, and they put about eighteen thousand, eighteen to twenty thousand behind Tammy, and then twenty thousand, another twenty thousand against her opponent, which was very unnecessary because like Tammy was a lock. So, but they didn't hesitate to put almost a million dollars between the three white candidates that they supported. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Maybe they didn't know they did this, but like literally, like it's it's like a five to one ratio of spending between candidates of color and white candidates on the progressive left, and it's even worse on the conservative what they spent on <laughs> with oh their candidates of color, but they actually gave more to the concert their candidates of color. Just it's like it's bigger crumbs off a bigger table. Mm-hmm. So this is, I think, as a Seattle as a whole issue. Like people of color are just being getting left behind overall, and it really reflects on the spending. It's at least a five to one ratio, ten to one ratio sometimes. And we just talk about Shaman and Sean; it's a two hundred to one ratio. <laughs> so it's like ridiculous. Like they literally just left him hanging, and he really had a chance to win. And I'm really disappointed in people who um, that, that made these decisions to really just say, "Oh, we're not going to help him," and but we're going to help him, or we're going to help him in name only, even though he's higher rated than some of the candidates that they supported. And Kenny's actually sought the chamber endorsement as well, which Sean, Shama, and Tammy never did. Like it's typical Seattle. I see over and over and over of like you know using people of color as props for their wokeness and then leaving them behind, putting no you know, no resources behind them. And I and, you, and it happens on all levels. And it's like you know as long as I want to target everybody, like I want the people to be aware of this that this happens on city level, county level, state level. I mean, like you see these things like um, state contracts. All every government contract, statewide, city level, ninety-seven percent of them go to white males, mm-hmm. and that's why we need affirmative action because that affects contracting. So people of color just been left behind if we do not have a racial equity lens and actually look at these things, and and really be intentional on, on who we're bringing into the fold and, and with resources, not just with name, because like you know, otherwise they're just using us. And it's, just, it's really like how I guess America works is just putting, getting people of color to do the work for free or you know next to nothing, and then white people benefit. Because of in and, and all these progressive packs, you know, and you know, even these progressive packs were a lot of white people paying white people to elect white people, mm-hmm. and that is what white supremacy is. And that is how that is what institutional racism. They didn't even hire white consultants. I mean, they could even hire me to have help in Dan's race or or Andrew Lewis's race, but like they didn't. And I'm not like asking for it, but it's just like. They, I don't think, and I think is I don't think they saw it. I don't think they meant to do it. I just don't, like obviously they have some blind spots that they need to really look at themselves and say, "Damn, we fucked up." We're in a situation now where our city is going to take on multinational companies, some of the richest, wealthiest people in the world, all of the billionaires that live in our city, <laughs> and that starve our public sector from revenue. Right. Mm-hmm. So, like, what what does that mean in terms of, like, keeping the electorate engaged after just, like, this crazy election cycle, but into, like, the policy making and really into, like, really understanding what types of contractions might happen because we're making big changes on the local level. We're trying to make big changes that might have significant consequences <laughs> um, here that will be felt by us in this city. But in the long run, like... We need those changes, right? I think a lot of people rightfully so have this assumption that we have a very progressive console and we elected Shama Sawan, so that means Amazon will get taxed, period. And I think 
first like if we can address that because we definitely have a chance on taxing big business a chance we wouldn't have had if we didn't have this kind of council but with a mayoral heavy handed city like how possible is that now with the current council we have like is it just as simple as we're gonna tax amazon tomorrow well can i add one more thing to that sorry so last time too the first time we did that amazon threatened to leave seattle right and that's what they (laughs) held over our heads right they're like fine we're gonna leave and we're gonna find another city and like that's just like what you see when when we when you try to enforce tax (laughs) like when you try to force tax evade taxes you see people Try to evade them. Yeah. yeah. And so that was like a form of tax evasion. And then another form of seeing like a big business being subsidized by government um, in a very contradictory way where they're saying, we want a smaller government. You know, we want no, parti- like we don't want regulation by government. But then they, you know, they go to New Jersey or they shop themselves around the nation and they say, what can you do for us? Mm-hmm. What tax breaks can mm-hmm. you, how can you incentivize us being in your city? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then like we're in this situation where amazon is threatening to leave but how likely is that and what would the impacts be on our city and how can we shore that up with whatever is happening on the federal level and i think now more than ever we really need to have a lot of connection and solidarity and organizing and coordination between what's happening on the federal level and what's happening on our hyper local levels because the economy has completely changed and capitalism has advanced so far that we all need to have a level of analysis and like what it means throughout every single level of government i think i mean you're exactly right two things i think amazon won't leave yeah, <laughs> they, they just won't. And two, if they well, do, well, break that down. Why won't Amazon? Leave? I mean, the uh, just like what they do is they just use it to find a, they'll find another HQ, but they're never going to leave that building. Like, yeah, or if they do, no one's going to leave that building hanging. Like, in, like the next. Are you talking yeah. about his balls? Or whatever. Yeah, they think Microsoft I mean, would just buy that building no right away. Ca- some, <laughs> sunken just, fallacy costs, right? <laughs> like they've put in so much money into all this these assets they're not gonna fucking leave yeah i dare i dare them to leave I yeah. really, it's an abusive relationship it's yeah. like yeah i, did, I dare them yeah. to leave i also find the off. irony of what well, i've been saying this like on, on social media it was just like how they talk about they want to counsel us to be fiscally responsible and you know decrease spending they fucking wasted three million dollars on this council and was just the most ineffective spending i've ever seen which could have been spent on housing exactly social services or 976 yes and or i 1000 oh, yeah oh. i 1000 i heard the chamber sp- so i've been working on i 1000 for the last few years the chamber said for years they were going to support it <laughs> and they gave no money they, they their president was Preaching that I was on, I was on the board of Tabor 100. We fought for this thing in committees in Olympia for years now, and finally it's on the ballot. It's you know it got qualified, and they never gave any money. They never it was all oh, we don't have money. Like all of a sudden, millions of dollars pops up for the city council election. Because so, they want to keep their money, they don't want to redistribute <laughs> so, that money. So yeah, so maybe I'm, I'm criticizing. So progressive AKA, PACs. they're not leaving. They're not which leaving. Is the question. They they're can't. Leaving. They don't know what to do with their money. They really need like to get a like. If anyone needs to look in the mirror, like, like I'm criticizing Progressive Pact, but the Chamber is still shit. Like lesser of two evils is still evil, but the Chamber is a greater of many evils right now. <laughs> and and the thing is, they're not going to leave. And if they do, like that building is free for like the next another corporation is going to take it over, or the city gets it back and does you know increases services or so, something like that's they just like I I dare them to leave. How many employees now in Seattle? Uh, a little bit over fifty thousand. Fifty thousand, yeah, that's that's a lot. Yeah, the money the the money they would pay in a head tax is pennies compared to what they do to do that whole lift and find a whole new headquarters and all that. That's why they won't leave unless they find a whole new tax benefit package. I mean, you saw the New city. York New York's resistance to Amazon, right? Yeah, yeah. and so. being able to push out and you know learning from lessons that we've gone through as a city and having Teresa Mosqueda and Lisa Herbal go there and yeah. Give I mean, a little workshop, anti Bezos workshop. <laughs> What's also not going to go away is the fear mongering, right? Mm. The mm-hmm. reason that I feel like this election cycle was so chaotic was because it was building upon months, years of anti homeless rhetoric. Um, this like notion that council members aren't being fiscally responsible, they're not being responsive to the needs of the city. All Amaz- this was a training exercise. This was absolutely a training exercise to see what worked, what didn't work. You know, the chamber, they're, they're going to recalibrate, right? Yeah. 
they did drop the money too late. What would have happened if they dropped the money earlier? Exactly. Right? Like, those things, it would be naive of us to believe that Amazon's just going to throw his hands up and be like, all right, well, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> What's going to happen is they're going to watch how these council members operate over the next couple years. What all that's going to mean is Amazon is going to spend their money differently. Corporations are going to spend their money differently. Google's moving in. Like, it's not just going to be Amazon. Yeah. Our yeah. housing crisis isn't going anywhere either, exactly. right? Like, exactly. Unless, unless these council members, and I really hope they fucking do, double down on building housing on in making meaningful investments to actually address this crisis it's going to funnel it's going to feed the hysteria and it's gonna come back and bite everyone in the ass yeah. when it comes to the next election exactly. yep and it's gonna carry over next year like next year is a state it's you know in january so people need to really pay attention to this to what happens in olympia because yeah. what happened with i-976 I mean that light rail Northgate is gonna you know freeze up now. Like we're not gonna finish it now or down to, out to Bellevue. Like all that stuff oh. is gonna be on halt, and we we own, we only we have to find other ways of revenue. And and hopefully, like I said, if we push on on legislature, talk to you, find out what district you're in on the, on the state level, on the legislative district, find your rep and find your senator and push them to push through corporate. Corporate tax, income tax, uh, capital, capital gains, gains tax. tax. Okay, everyone needs <laughs> a, a night with their wine and just do a little heart to heart with your with your state. Yeah, yeah, we need I yeah, that's we all need we need. I nine seven to be flipped through through legal action, but definitely do not believe the centrist liberal narrative that this is the only way to achieve a lot of these transportation victories, housing victories. There are other ways to get that money. Exactly. Fuck yeah. Yes. And we need to push for that as well. Yeah. And let's not forget, like, our council last time around was, quote, unquote, progressive enough to pass a head tax. Unanimously. Yeah. Unanimously. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Unanimously, we passed a head tax that got repealed, and then that failed seven to two. You know, so it's, we are very well going to have enough to pass another form of that. But then it's organizing time. It's organizing time before that, during that, after that. Because like we've said many times on this episode, Jenny Durkin still holds a lot of power, which on a side note, 2021 mayoral election is going to be very important. Who we push in that seat. And Amazon still owns her. And Amazon still owns her. So they, so when they say we lost, they lost. They lost like 20% of the city because mm -hmm. they still own the mayor. And in the a mayor mayor's still, town. Yeah, in a mayor strong city. So, so that's so that's really you know we can we celebrate that victory, but we have if we don't build on it. It's we're gonna run a roadblock after roadblock for the next two years until we actually find a way to get a new mayor. If if Durkin comes back, because I hear she won't. If, and if we were to bring back the employee hours tax, one thing we have to talk about is like, I love Shama. That's my auntie Shama, but she has burned relationships on the left as well. And during that whole campaign. The loudest folks in City Hall were Socialist Alternative, and they were, you know, it wasn't like communities of color. It wasn't known youth show, Block the Bunker. Like, all of the people who have been in City Hall as well, that's not who SA was building with to mm -hmm. continue that movement. And, you know, it's very real that when people see the Red Army, they just shut down, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. even if they're saying shit that we agree with, you're like, oh, mother. God. We need to see ourselves in there, too. And yeah. it, I mean, that onus is on us, too, right? Like, even within progressive council offices, like, we got to be calling up people that we build with to be like, mm -hmm. this is going down and we need you to show up. But Shama okay. shit and the socialist alternative, like, have not been intersectional. No. And I feel no. like that's this. <laughs> no. But this is the thing, right? It's like, like, no. classism and be and like white poor people have always been able to galvanize around their poverty in order to talk about injustice. But white people need to talk about injustice in the context of historical racism and colonialism and settler colonialism and understand like the history of slavery and colonialism in the context of their poverty. Mm -hmm. And if they can't, and if they can't work in solidarity with communities of color, then like they're going to isolate an entire movement. But that is how that was const constructed. You know, like right. I feel like like capitalism yeah. constructed the narrative of poverty to pit white poor folks against people of color. And so uh, there needs to be something that finally unites p 
people of color and whatever the fuck SA is doing. But SA needs to f- develop a like racial justice analysis and an intersection analysis in order to move their shit forward. Absolutely. And that's why I and I don't think we have that candidate in office right now. No, it was it was gonna be Sean. Point of distinction though, like Shama, I feel like is the most consistent council member and she is reliable. I feel like she really reflects movements that and policy that come from communities of color that are demands of communities of color, right? Like the no new jail no new youth jail movement and like rent control. Like yeah. none of that shit's new, right? Like communities of color know what they want and they need. And then Shama builds her policy platform around that and then is a is able to make that kind of more mainstream. If someone's listening to us, they're going to be like, well, then who the fuck do y'all like? Because we harp on SA. We harp on DSA. We harp on everybody else. We harp on TSA. We <laughs> <laughs> we definitely harp on, we harp on TMZ. <laughs> so, like, what is an example of a group that we fuck with? Activist class. Yeah. <laughs> no, no friends. Just kidding. Uh, no youth jail is fucking lit forever yes they are a lot of grassroots mm-hmm. orgs that are really solid not always perfect but definitely always solid oh, yeah. um but i i think i think the the bigger point to that too is just like this is not to say like we're not riding with shama sawan well, duh. you know we're Pop not riding with her. tammy Morales. literally till i die yeah and w- <laughs> yeah and i want to <laughs> clarify that because like i think the larger point is the accountability and community around them and i I heard Aretha say many times in previous episodes, like you can't be in power in isolation. Mm-hmm. This know? criticism comes out of love. <laughs> I think it comes out of a place of love. Like we want them to do better and we got to, but we also got to say, exactly. we got to do better ourselves. Like I, I mean, I, I could go on a whole nother show about the mistakes I felt I made this whole campaign. We should have a <laughs> whole episode on just mistakes. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I made, I made all kind of like, you know, this like, uh, this is uh, this is the consulting things. I'm used to being like one of the workers being on staff, doing knocking the doors, doing the phone calls. And it's like, now I'm, you know, doing the consulting. I'm, I'm, it's a new world for me. I've made tons of mistakes and I probably piss a lot of people off. I probably shouldn't or said things. So it's like, we got to be able to look at ourselves, but like, so, if I, but I'm, you know, that's, and that's the only reason I feel I can criticize other folks because we want them to do better and we want that solidarity. Say, like, hey, this is what we need from you, but we also want to hear what, like, what do you need from us? Like, what does the SA, you know, are they going to come to like the other groups, like the, the DSA, the, D- the progressive Dems, and, and, uh, and other folks and say, hey, like, mm-hmm. this is what we would like from you. And hopefully that's like, I, th- I really hope Amazon really help spark that and put those together because they really saw like that that created a lot of solidarity with these with uh, these these groups and hopefully there's a momentum carried over to for the next yeah, i really appreciate that real i feel like the reality is what we all need to work on is our endurance around accountability you know like mm-hmm. no one it's fuck elusive. purity culture it's elusive fuck it it's like it's a process we're all fucking up we're every all day. messy we're messy we're all messy bitches People need and it. we need to learn to say sorry <laughs> And then act out that sorry and show up. So this is our very last election episode Thank for God. a very long time. So um, great. If you guys have tuned in for the last Can four you or five weeks. we almost hit 3,000 downloads talking about fucking city council right? elections? Oh, we it's did? So we're um, you move on nerds. <laughs> Yeah, Keep nerds. tuning in. <laughs> next week we're gonna talk about Kanye. We'll talk about Drake being booed at the Tyler oh Crater concert. <laughs> anyway, we're not talking Sorry. about any of that, but we'll definitely be talking about more specific issues. Word. Especially uh, leading up into the 2020 federal presidential election. Yep. Does this and mean and I have get to all stop your being the angry black guy. If polls <laughs> taught us anything, Shama was supposedly out of it, and Sean had no chance. I think Bernie got a shot. Bernie. I'm sorry. I'm just like that. Doesn't mean spec is still uh, Yang Gang. Oh no! I'm like I'm. I've been, <laughs> You're I've, been, so I've, been, I've, been, I've been burning for a few months now. I'm pretty. <laughs> oh, a few months. We got spec. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> oh my God, Aretha is still mourning what? because wow, Instagram is taking away their likes. Oh yeah. And all of us influencers are a little flopped. Subscribe, <laughs> like, five stars are on every platform. Google, Stitcher, you name it. Venmo. ITunes. There you go. Venmo, is that what we said? <laughs> <laughs> We're all on Venmo. We're definitely all on Venmo. And Cash App. Um, Listen, I'm on Mumble, Tinder, and Hinge. What's <laughs> up? <laughs>
Wait, well, you're not on that new um, dating site? What's a new, what's a new I'm gonna one? need you to be a little more specific. I am too, bitch. <laughs> 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 